Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle Primaris Psychers for the Astra Militarum. This particular miniature, this is Arata, Aradia, Arata, Aradia Medellin, I think is her full name. She comes from the Escalation set for Blackstone Fortress. But these techniques will work with any of the Psyche miniatures available for the Astra Militarum. So don't feel as though you need to run out and buy this specific miniature. Now I'll list all of the paints in the description below. It's worth pointing out there are a little more than usual in this particular guide because we're going to take our time and actually I had a lot of fun painting this. These sorts of miniatures make for really good centerpieces for your army so I think it takes, you know, it's worth investing a little more time in them. But without any further mucking around, let's get started. Now to start off with, I've primed the Psyker with Skeleton Bone from the Army Painter. And you might wonder, why not Xandru Dust? Short answer really is I just prefer the lighter jacket. Uh, some of the older styles of Psykers used to have quite a almost just off-white cream jacket versus the darker brown that they have now. If you do prefer that other look, then you could just use Xandru Dust instead. But I've got my skeleton bone. You'll see just a couple of areas, you know, down the back of her neck there, for example, where that hasn't quite hit perfectly. But we're not going to worry too much about that because honestly, we're likely to uh, paint over those another color anyway. So what I'm doing first of all is just getting some slightly thinned down skeleton bone. And I'm just going to go ahead and smooth out her jacket. Just make sure that any areas which I might have missed with the uh, primer are not missing that nice smooth coat. Now, if you do want to use Citadel colors from this point forward, you could instead just switch to a Shabti bone for this. Now, the first color that we're going to apply is Corn Red. And I've added just a little bit of this to my palette with some water, just to thin that out so it flows smoothly. And we'll go ahead and You'll probably find it easiest to attack it from the side like this to get this color on. Now don't worry too much if you do get some of it on her trousers or her boots. The only part you really want to be avoiding at this stage is that beige jacket. Now you might get some of the base coat still showing through, so if you do see any streaking in that red, you can come back and give it a second coat if you need to. I do not seem to be able to paint a straight line today, so you'll see there's a little bit of wiggling on the bottom here, but we can tidy that up later on with some skeleton bone fairly easily. What we'll do now is switch on to Mechanicus Standard Grey, and we're going to go up to a fairly small area of colour and paint in her trousers. Now we're going to move up slightly and use some Warg Flesh, and there's two areas we're going to paint with this. First of all, there's this little loincloth thing she's got sitting at the front here. Don't worry too much about the edges or the uh, icon that's sort of embossed in the front there, because again, we're going to paint those a different color later. But I'm also going to paint in her, uh, this scarf, what do you call it, belt, <laughs> a sash around her waist. Now, the miniature that's on the website, uh, you'll see that they've done this in white, but the old uh, Weird Vein Psychers, they had a light green sash, and I want to tie her in with what I've already got in my army. If you did want to use white instead, you could swap to, you know, Corax White or White Scar or anything here. Let's give it a couple of coats of that, but I'm going to go with green, mostly because I think it adds a bit of color to the model. Now that we've got a nice solid green after a couple of coats, we'll move on and I've got Lead Belcher. And we're going to cover over all of the metallic details and honestly, if there's a time-consuming part, it's going to be this one. Because you've got this collar thing at the back of her here. You've got her chest piece. Uh, parts of her, what do you call it, the staff thing. Now, anything that's going to be gold later, you will find it easier if you do paint it over with a little bit of silver now. That's the grey. I've dipped into the, <laughs> into the wrong part there. Uh, but not to worry. I'll just let that dry and I'll put some silver over it instead. Uh, so, for example, on her back here, there's going to be a few areas that will be uh, gold, or sort of a brassy color. But if we do those silver now, we're giving them a nice base coat, and we don't have to worry too much about where we're painting. Just be careful when you come close to where her jacket is. 
Now that might take a little bit of patience, and don't paint grey on a chest like I did, but you'll end up with something looking like this. Um, I've chosen to do all of the hoses in uh, metal as well, we're going to go over those with a contrast colour later. And speaking of contrast, we're going to go ahead and do her skin. Now for this, if we apply Gilliman Flesh straight over um, skeleton bone, we're going to get a very dark skin tone, which is not ordinarily what you want for a Psyker. So instead what we'll do is actually thin it out a little with some of the contrast medium. So I'm going to get a clean brush, and let's dip in there once, twice, three times. Rinse my brush off. And then we'll go ahead and get some Gilliman Flesh. And I'm going to go for this once, and then twice. Off to the side, so I'm not contaminating either pot when I'm going back into them with my brush. Let's quickly mix those in together. And then what we can do is get our thinned out Gilman Flesh Mix, and we'll just apply this all over her face, and this little section on her hand here too. Now while that dries, you can switch on down to a smaller brush, and I've got some Avaland Sunset. What we'll do is we'll paint in the outside of her little tabard section here. And I'm also going to paint in just this section of the tassels. So there's a little bit of visual interest there. Now it doesn't matter too much at which stage you do these, as long as it's after the green. Um, I'm doing it so it gives me something to do while I'm waiting for the uh, Gilliman Flesh to dry. Now I am going to need to tidy up that green a little bit later on, because I've made a little bit of a mess there, but not to worry. We're going to keep our tidy up stage near the end. What I've got now is some dryad bark, and we're going to paint in leather details. And I always find, with miniatures like this, it can be quite daunting to look at them initially. You know, there's so much detail, where do I start? But, uh, you know, if you just break it down, and we're just following simple steps here, one after the other. It's not so daunting. So, let's fill this in. And I'll cruise around and fill in her uh, holster as well. And you might see here, with this icon on her holster, why we're doing the brown before we do the gold. But I'll let you guess <laughs> what's happening there. Now, at last, grab yourself your Retributor armor and something like a small base brush. Uh, you're going to want to switch between this for a couple of smaller details, obviously, but for this big dealy bopper here, a few extra bristles, and just take your time, slow down a little when you come near the silver you've already painted. We can tidy that up in a couple of seconds. So once you've done the uh, staff head, I don't know what you call that really, switch on down to probably a small medium, a uh, small medium, goodness me, a small layer brush, um, I know folks in the comments are going to laugh at the small medium, <laughs> and I don't blame you all. Uh, but yeah, any little gold details now, you can fill those in. Now finally we're looking like we're starting to get somewhere. <laughs> it can take a while with some of these characters. What I've got now is Steel Legion Drab, and we're just going to quickly fill in her staff here. Don't worry too much if this doesn't cover perfectly. Um, what I've got here might actually be a little bit thin, but if you do get some of that uh, skeleton bone showing through, then once that dries, it's going to give you kind of a wood grain effect, which will work fairly well. Uh, if you've sort of splashed everywhere with the metallic like I did, <laughs> you might want to come back and give it a second coat just to get rid of that. But the actual wood itself will look fairly good as is. Now we're finally going to start applying some shades to get some of the, funnily enough, shading on this miniature. And we're going to use a few of these. I'm going to start off first of all with some Seraphim Sepia. Load up my brush, but you don't want to go crazy with this. This is a little different to how I'd normally apply, you know, my all over Agrax Earth Shades. What I'm going to do is start from the top of the cape here, and try and keep my brush moving in the same direction. You'll find that you keep a bit more control of where your shade ends up by doing that. You can concentrate a little and let it build up in those areas where you want that shading. But you'll see while it's wet, 
I can use my brush to guide it away from areas where it's pulling too much. So this is the real advantage to sort of slowing down here and using just a little bit at a time to accentuate those folds and highlights in her cape. Now bearing in mind you'll need to swivel her around here too and also her sleeves and collar you'll need to shade these with the same color. Now after about 30 minutes to dry, you'll end up with something that looks like this. And now the reason for such a light primer might become clear. What we'll move on to next is Nuln Oil. And we're going to put this over all of the silver metallics. Uh, just a quick coat of this in the same way. When you do the armor on the front of her though, try and avoid getting it on the uh, gold section. But don't worry too much if you do. Now I always love Lead Belcher with a bit of Nuln Oil, that looks really cool. Now you've got a decision to make about how you want to do the gold, because what I like is a dark, almost sort of brassy finish to it. So I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade, and I'm going to do at the same time the rest of her clothing, the leather and the wood. Um, if you do want a brighter finish, sort of a more warm rose gold, what you can use is uh, Reichland Flesh Shade instead. Uh, but I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade because, well, that's what I like. So load my brush up, and let's start applying this all over the gold. You'll see straight away you get that sort of deeper brassy color, which I kind of think suits these guys a little more. And at the same time, clothing, all that sort of stuff. Pretty much everything that we haven't shaded yet. Of course, one of the other advantages to using Agrax Earthshade on the gold is you then don't have to wait for yet another shade to dry. Uh, but there's all of our shades on, and at last we're going to move to black. And we're going to very carefully paint in her gloves and her boots. So of course, take your time with this one, because you'll find at this stage, if you do make any mistakes, you can tidy them up, but it's far easier to really slow down and uh, avoid making them if you can. All right, this is the one point at which I'd say, really take your time and be careful. Now as well, what I'm gonna do is something that I've seen on the uh, miniature itself. Now we're also gonna go down to a smaller brush and very carefully black in, there we go, these uh, brain thingies she's got going. I tend to find it easiest if I'm drawing the brush straight towards me. So wherever possible, I'll orient the miniature so that those lines are facing my way. Oh, there she is. <laughs> now what we'll do is go onto Iron Hand Steel, and we're gonna use this for two things. First off, like on her glove here, there's a few small silver details. Uh, these little, finger bobblies that she's got, um, you know, anything like the buttons on the back of her sleeve, although I might go to a slightly smaller brush to do those. Uh, these little hand control units, you can fill those in now, um, like this for example, with iron hand steel. And also highlight, if we spin her around here, let's get a look at the front, you can use this to highlight the uh, lead belcher. So just a quick flick of that along some of the uppermost edges. Now with these, um, what do you call them, hoses that are attached to the front of her armor, what I'm gonna do is actually fill those in completely with iron hand steel. And we'll see what we're gonna do with those in a minute. Now, one final detail you can do with this, these little black bits that we've painted onto her head, you can very carefully get in there again, do the same thing and just lightly fill them in with some iron hand steel. And that will look quite good. Now, if you want to non oil those details on her hands, for example, or around her head, you can do that, but I don't think you're really gonna to need to. What I'm gonna do with those nice shiny hoses now, though, is to get some black Templar. And we'll just apply that straight over the top here. The reason why I'm doing this, rather than just non, -oily, or say, non oiling, there we go, the uh, section again. This Black Templar has this very slight sort of blue-black finish to it. Very nice. 
Now I've just popped her up on one of my red grass rotating handles because I'm going to find this quite handy when we come to do some of the highlights. We're going to start though with some white and a brush which you don't see very often on this channel which is my Artificer small layer brush. <laughs> uh, what we're going to do is very carefully get in there and just paint in her eyes. Don't worry if you don't get them completely, all you really want is one little spot which is white. At the same time, which you will find easier without a camera in the way, get in and fill in her top row of teeth. And while you've got your white out, you have a decision to make about how you want to do the little bobblies on the back of her sort of hood there. I'm going to get some white, and what I'm going to do is fill in these little bobbles as carefully as I can, not worrying too much if I don't get right to the edges with them. But just a quick coat of white will let these dry and then come back and give them another. Now you'll notice I haven't gone right to the edges. There's still a little bit of that Nolan Oil ring around these little, I guess, lamps. <laughs> she looks like a peacock. <laughs> uh, but I've got here Ethermatic Blue and uh, still using a nice small brush for this. We're going to lightly just blop a little bit of this on each of these lamps and then I will go down to an even smaller brush again, probably back to that uh, Artificer layer brush, and do the same to her eyes. And then if you'd like you can grab your white again and just spot in up in sort of the top corners of these little lamps. Now for the highlight stage I'm going to quickly rattle through each paint that I'm using. I'm not going to spend a lot of time sort of explaining what we're doing because at this stage we're really just painting thin lines of the original color or a slightly lighter one to do our highlights. So I've gone back to Skeleton Bone first of all to do the uh, edges of her coat. Remembering of course if you are sticking to Citadel you could use instead here Ushapti Bone. Then a little bit of Waz Decker Red if you feel like brightening up Funnily enough, some of those red areas. With Ungor Flesh, we'll highlight the yellow. And then some Strachan Green on, well, the green. And then real quick, a little bit of Dawnstone on her trousers. And then just a little bit of Storm Vermin Fur, anywhere that you want to highlight her leather, so boots or gloves. When it comes to the gold, there's two ways to do this. I've got here some Liberator Gold, and I'm going to use this on all of the smaller areas. So little bits of detail like the chest, uh, any bits on her clothing. But then I'm going to peel her off of the handle and get some Sigmarite and lightly dry brush this big section of gold. When you come to the uh, silver stuff, just hold her upside down and you can go up and along in that way. And then for your final highlights, grab yourself some Flayed One Flesh and we'll just do some very small highlights along the edges of her cheekbones. If I can get a point on my brush here. Her nose, bottom lip, chin, and her brows. Wait, I told a lie, there is one more highlight. We're going to use a little bit of Gawthor Brown and do that brown leather, which I forgot from earlier. And that would have not looked quite as cool without. Now all that remains is to give her a quick varnish and then to go ahead and slap her on a base. So I'm going to go ahead and base her up to match the rest of my army. Let's get a look at what she looks like when she's finally finished. And there we have it at last. Our Imperial Psyker is complete, and the Aradia Medellin miniature is really cool, but remember of course these techniques will work on the ordinary, I say, <laughs> Primaris Psyker, as well as the Weird Vein Psykers. Uh, they would actually be probably a little bit easier to paint than this, owing as they don't have all of the extra metallic armor and stuff to paint. So there you go, something to add to your Imperial Guard armies, or Astra Militarum, whatever it is you <laughs> happen to be collecting. Um, I've really enjoyed doing this, and I think it goes to show the power of very simple techniques. 
Now, when I say simple, what I mean is there's been no blending, there's been no uh, complicated techniques. All we're doing is a base coat, a shade, and then a highlight. We've even skipped out on the stage where most painting guides will suggest doing a layer after the shade. So even though this uses more paints than you might ordinarily see in one of my guides, uh, I think the result is well worth it. She's going to look really cool on the table. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking over in paint and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Ben Hicks, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, and Connor. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.